Well, welcome. I know it was a long trip. All the way from Indiana. Good to meet you. Yeah. Baron Parker is uh, joining us here from Indiana. We're doing another Bronco video where we show you step by step stock. We work into stock with a can and cold air. And then we're going to tune it and show you the results afterwards. So we'll show you each of those as we go through. And we're looking forward to showing Perrin, uh, sorry, Farron, his um, final result. So how did you hear about us? Well, I was uh, Googling search of um, things you could do to modify the beef up the horsepower and performance of uh, the new Ford Broncos. You guys were right there, like the second or third thing that I had seen, and then I started seeing the videos, and then I even called you and talked to you, and, and the way you guys do it, professionally tune the computer and dyno it in, and then it stays. There's nothing to mess with or change. The life of the vehicle just sold me on it. And then the amount of horsepower you get, where you basically turn this little puppy into basically the uh, a Raptor version. Yeah. Without the, the extra $25,000 price tag. <laughs> so that got my attention. So stay tuned and see what happens. I think he's going to make me a very happy camper. Okay, we just finished running some baseline passes. Now, we expected this, but we weren't sure how much loss we were gonna see. He has massive tires. So this is a baseline with no modifications, no tuning, just the way it came from the factory floor. And I mean from the way it came, because he only had 800 miles on it when he left from home. After doing a few baselines and coming up with our best solid pass, 319 foot-pounds of torque, that's the green line here, 238 horsepower to the wheels. So if you look at the stock Bronco rating, you're going to see that those big tires definitely drag down the turbo, drag down the motor, and makes it very, very hard for this machine to put the power to the ground. Don't worry. Stay tuned. We're going to help that out. Now we're going to install the can in intake and do no tuning and just see what the actual can in intake by itself does to that 319 horsepower or 319 foot pounds of torque and 240 horsepower. Okay, the stock air intake system, it's good. Let's let's not kid ourselves. When the customer drove in, he said this thing actually is pretty peppy. I like the way it feels, and he's got massive tires on it. So if we come from here, your intake from your air box is here. And they've got a little plenum here that goes over. And this is all pretty good angularity here. This piece that goes to this side is pretty good angularity. The problem is in order to get into this air box, you have to join the other side of the intake to the air box, to the plenum. And by the time you get down into here, you're having to turn a big angle over 70 degrees to turn again. And there's a scrunch right here. Right in here, they actually twist the rubber, and when they pinch, you end up with a hole down there that's basically the size of a US silver dollar feeding your turbo. So we're replacing it with this. As you can see, it's a nice straight run. It doesn't obstruct the air from coming in, and they have not put a great big twist in the rubber to put that buck onto the turbo. Okay, when we talk about the stock unit feeding the driver's side turbo, not nearly as restrictive. It's pretty good. But as we look through this, we see that this end has more of an angle on the corner. It's a much tighter, it's a much tighter angle to get the air through. And this is a straight 90. Again, you come around through the ribs and we're feeding the turbo with this. So the turbo has to draw its air through a 90, through ribs, through a really tight corner. Now let me show you. Here's the K&N. The K&N takes this and makes a very broad, broad angle all the way through here. 
And when you come here, it makes a nice angle coming out here. It does not pinch it and turn it 90 degrees. Yeah. All right, here's the stock unit. And again, we see the air comes in here, goes down, makes a 90 degree curve, actually goes down underneath, travels back up through the bottom of the filter so that now there's dirt being filtered out of it, makes another corner, comes down, feeds out here to the driver's side, feeds down here through this little tiny one to the passenger side. This is where you're actually getting the air to supply the turbos. Okay, hold up a second. I want you to see one of these things is definitely not like the other. Now we go to the K&N unit. <laughs> All right, let's take simplicity to its nth degree. Straight in, there's an air filter in here. There's a big plenum. This feeds out to a very large elbow. No restrictions, just simply feeding air to the air filter where it's supposed to be. difference between the stock and with just a K&N intake added on before we start tuning. So here we go. 335 foot-pounds of torque to the wheels, 254 horsepower to the wheels. The green is your K&N. You can see it just creeps up and it does what every cold air intake says it'll do. It makes more power everywhere. Just works really nice. Here's the horsepower down at the bottom, your mustard color and your red, and it just makes a little bit more horsepower everywhere, especially in the higher RPM, where it starts to get a chance to kind of open up and use that air. That's the difference. We look at 16 foot-pounds of torque and 15 horsepower. The big tires on this particular model are gonna drag everything down. It's just a lot of weight to move, and the reality is, we can convert everything to horsepower at the motor. We're not doing that. This is horsepower to the wheels, and in this case, very large 315 tires. All right, so we move on to part two. We start tuning. Putting on parts and pieces is great, but the tuning portion, increased torque, increased RPM, increased horsepower, all the way through the range, that's what really gets us excited. And when you're driving down the road, that's what's gonna get you excited too. In the end, we have tracked one of these for months. We get much better fuel mileage. We have a lot better torque. It's just a lot more fun to drive. Okay, we've made a few passes now. We have started tuning. We're starting to creep up on the boost curve a little bit and while he's monitoring the air fuel. While he's monitoring the air fuel, he's making sure that everything is safe, everything is correct, but we're starting to see some power also. To the wheels now, we're no longer in the 200s or 300s. We move up into the 403 foot-pound range, 309 horsepower. We're still creeping up on this tune. Okay, we have worked our way through the tune and we're pretty excited as of this point. 452 foot-pounds to the wheels. You can see the torque curve here. It looks different than anything else that has been on the screen previously today. It basically goes straight up. It comes over and it peaks nicely and then just falls over nice and slow over a nice period of time. This is gonna be a fun vehicle to drive. 452 horse, uh, sorry, foot-pounds of torque, 338 horsepower. Yeah. The overall numbers are great, but where did we start and where did we finish? Let's take a look at the numbers. Let's take a look at the lines. We previously saw that we had 
gone up to 452 foot-pounds of torque. That's a 133 foot-pound increase from stock. This is a whole different vehicle to drive now. It accelerates quicker, it's better on fuel, and it's absolutely more power to put you in the back of your seat. Let's take a look at the horsepower. Here's your horsepower now in the mustard. That's where it started today. And here we are at the end of today. 100 horsepower gain from start to finish, 133 foot-pounds gain from start to finish. The overall numbers are not as big as we've gotten from some of our other Broncos, but this Bronco has those great big 315, like a 35 and a half inch tire on it. So this one sucks a little bit more power out of the drivetrain to put to the ground. It won't matter. When this gentleman is driving his vehicle back to Indiana, he's going to have a lot more fun. Hi boys, I made it back. Couldn't be any happier. Job well done, boys. I, I call it my Raptor upgrade with a far less money than what you'd spend on a Raptor. These monster tires had a lot to do with uh, probably slowing the horsepower down just a little because of so much grip and they were so big. But hey, I, I can't complain um, for everything you guys done. Uh, I'm pretty happy. I'd do it again in a heartbeat. Does a good job of just keeping it in the 